City Police in Leigh and Port Mosby out in full force tonight. I must play in day go, um. Eastern Highlands Police ease tensions in Hengonofi. And it's New Year's resolution time again. This is National MTV News with Mirba Tolo. Good evening and thank you for joining us for this New Year's Eve edition of the news. Port Mosby residents have been advised to welcome the New Year peacefully. National Capital District Divisional Commander Assistant Commissioner Sylvester Kalaut says police will be on patrol on New Year's Eve to ensure peaceful celebrations in NCD. Kalaut's comments follow an increase in police reports on the noise pollution in residential areas. With just hours remaining before the new year, and NCD residents have been asked to welcome 2016 with consideration for other families in their communities. Over the years, Port Mosby has been known as one of the noisiest cities during New Year celebrations in the country, and Commissioner Cloud says police will be keeping an ear out for noise pollution in residential areas. Mr. Kalaut said the joint festive operations conducted by police, safety officers from the National Road Safety Authority and Transport Department were smooth. He said since 24 December, only minor incidences like drivers driving under the influence of liquor and the illegal sale of alcohol in residential areas were reported to police. And for tonight, police will be carrying out a massive operations throughout the night. These operations will conclude on 2nd January 2016. Thakla Gunga, National MTV News. Lay Metropolitan Commander Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. has sounded a warning to the public on the illegal use of firecrackers within the city. He said lay police would be tracking down on people in possession of fireworks in their homes after New Year celebrations. Police in Leh are now geared for the operations which commence tonight. Despite previous warnings, Leh City would still see firecrackers being used tonight. These were smuggled into Leh from Jayapura in Indonesia through Vanimo. Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. has warned against the use of firecrackers tonight. The Chief Superintendent says now that his officers cannot control the number of crackers already in the city, police will continue confiscating firecrackers after the new year. It was not properly regulated or, or controlled. So these things were brought into the country. And now it's in everybody's hands. It's, it's all over the place now. And uh, for here in Leigh, we will crack down on it. As soon as the new year ends... We'll Amidst the warnings, youngsters are preparing to celebrate the new year with firecrackers at the back of their homes. Tracking down how the illegal items came into Leigh is a painstaking challenge for authorities. The firecrackers are smuggled in large quantities, making it difficult to detect. In some instances, those involved have been members of the law enforcers themselves. Colin Barilai, National MTV News, Lay. Still in Lay, police in Lay will be out in full force tonight. They will cover all parts of the city, including Bumayong and West Taraka. The city's law and order committees and ward councillors will also support police operations during the new year period. The communities have also organized themselves to assist police in patrolling their areas as well as keep a lookout for troublemakers. Lay Metropolitan Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. pledged his support to the organized groups. This is to ensure that they work in partnership to allow peaceful New Year celebrations. Wagambi is also calling on the general public to celebrate New Year in trouble-free manner. In uh, Lake City, we are, all the police personnel will be out and, on, uh, in full force for the operation today, starting today and then ending. To Wagambi was among the other officers promoted on Tuesday. He is promoted to the rank of chief superintendent. This is a motivating factor for him to do more for lay. There's been bad publicity on the conduct of police personnel and with the promotion of members to higher ranks, Wagambi is calling on both commissioned and non-commissioned officers to exercise leadership and instill discipline and to ensure professional and productive work conduct. Uh, it's a challenge to the members now because we have been receiving a lot of 
bad publicity from the public about police conduct. So with, with promotions, we expect uh, better performance and better supervision from those people who have been promoted. Mata Lewis, National MTV News, Lay. With only hours before 2016, Port Mosby residents are already prepared with their New Year resolutions. MTV's Eric Haropma spoke to some city residents. Port Mosby residents were more than eager to disclose their resolutions on camera. Here's what these Port Mosby residents had to say about their life in 2016. My New Year's resolution this year, I mean 2016, I'd like to go back to church full time. Just to change a bit of, it's a little passing na. Or some sense, some kind of attitude, blah, you me. Or some, let's just talk business, lah, lah, too. Passing, lah, lah, too. Ah. This resolution, blah, me. Um, we like stop, lah, guy, guy, boy. Yeah, resolution, blah, me. Um, maybe business, be an. Stop, boy, one time. Lo, say, blah, me. At lo school, lo same. It's anything good, lo. Come on, blah, good, blah, man. No future. Study hard, no work hard, na. At least give some, blah, work hard work, lo, pama. Now, new year resolution, blah, me. Um, me la lose be an. I'll use it now, please. Let's see beer. Pass in the drink bucket now, round there. Mask. No, some people like let's see more some black. They the biggest pass in number drink beer. Only marona is there. It's raining here in Port Mosby, and as the clock tickles down to 2016, Port Mosby residents have come up with their New Year resolutions. Their resolutions comes as a sign of relief that will bring them fortune comes 2016. Happy New Year! Eric Arupma, National MTV News. Residents at Gerhu Stage 1 in Port Mosby are celebrating the New Year's Eve underwater. After two hours of rain early this morning, excessive drain water has flooded their homes. They blame the construction company building the Gerhu to Nine Mile Road for no proper drainage. The flood caused by last night's rain occurred between 4 and 6 this morning at Gerhu Stage 1. The affected residential areas are along the newly constructed Gerau to Nine Mile Road. Residents complained that this is not the first time the homes have been flooded. They blamed the construction company building the road. Most of our houses are underwater. Now we are frustrated. We have small children, babies, all adults, we are swimming. Residents complained that the drainage system that has been built is too small. They say a bridge should have been built to cater for the large volume of the water that passes through when it rains. And at the first place, uh, when they started the road, we told them about the drainage uh, problem here. This morning, the homes were flooded with rubbish and water. Because of the construction at the back, there wasn't any outlet for the water to go, so everything was just piled inside the household. For this resident, John Karenga, he compiled a 300-page document for the past damages caused by the same company. The company had broken a sewage pipe in his area and for almost six weeks in May and June this year, it was polluted with feces. And today, his property is underwater. He demanded the National Capital District Commission to address it urgently. Photo here, this civets. It's a concentrated volume of civets, pure civets, inside the house, not from the lawn. You know, it's threatening the human life here, as well as the structural damage here. They are doing all this construction on the dry season, and uh, once it's in the first 30 minutes, there is only risk already. The residents are frustrated that they are unable to celebrate the new year in style. They will have to clean the house and dry up the clothes and beddings. MTV tried to get comments from the construction company, but they refused. Basinata Yama, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Among stories after the break, tensions in Hanganofi, police presence to increase in rural areas, and Solomon Tato reinstated in the Eastern Highlands province. Welcome back to the news. Eastern Highlands Police have managed to ease tensions between Hanganofi villagers and PMV operators after a hit-and-run accident two days ago near Hanganofi Station. Acting Provincial Police Commander David Sene was in Hanganofi to speak to relatives of the man who was killed after a Hagen-bound bus hit him in the early hours of Wednesday morning. 
After relatives of a young Hanganofi man blocked off road access on Tuesday, police arrived at Hanganofi station to speak to them. After four hours of negotiations, the acting provincial police commander, David Sene, convinced relatives to allow access for PNVs and other vehicles. It's like heavy you talk longer, you know, nupla lomi. I must play in Daigo and come up, come up, come up. Yes, me got one kind bell pen one time, you. The man was killed in the early hours of Tuesday morning by a bus headed for Mount Hagen, but close coordination between Simbu and Eastern Highlands Police resulted in the arrest of the drivers and crew members of six buses travelling together during the incident. Uh, it was fortunate that uh, our police from Hanganofi had a communication with the guys uh, the police down in uh, Port Mosby, Barocco. And uh, communication was established with our comms down in Barocco and uh, Masul. And Ma Masul Highway Patrol. So at uh, Masul, they had a roadblock there and they got all uh, suspected uh, uh, PMV buses. The Barola, Compre and Hanganofi sections of the highway has seen periods of tension over the last 24 months. In 2014, the murder of a young teacher triggered roadblocks with relatives and opportunists seeking to gain from the death. This latest incident has also prompted police to step up operations along that section of the highway. Scott Waide, National MTV News, Lay. Police Minister Robert Atiyafa says police manpower will be increased in the next two years. Remote places like Menyamya in Morabe, Tilifomen in the Sundown Province and parts of Obura Waninara District like Marawaka in the Eastern Highlands Province have only one police officer. Bethany Herman reports. This continues to be a problem for remote parts of the country. Morobe's Menyamia district is a classic example and questions were put forward to the police minister Robert Atiyah for yesterday. Atiyah for replied saying the police are recruiting 2,000 personnel per year to ease the shortage. So I'm passing out uh, close to 2,000 police trainees already. We got uh, a recruitment work long. Ongoing. In Menyamia, there is only one police officer working with very limited resources. For places like Menyamia, villages are clusters of people scattered across rugged terrain. When there is a problem, rural police officers have to make the long journey there and back again. It often takes days. Now, for a rural command that is aging with limited resources, that's a tough ask. Last year, a man was thought to have been murdered. The body was kept by villagers for three days before this lone cop was flown into Lagai village by a chopper to inspect the body. Um, expanding my uh, partnership program, long Australian police, one time PNG, uh, Royal PNG Constabulary, long, we got all other provinces. Ati Afa has also asked the Australian Federal Police for an expansion of their partnership with the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary to other provinces outside of Leh and Port Moresby. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Leh. The latest court decision in the battle for the Eastern Highlands Provincial Administrator position went in favour of Solomon Tato. An urgent application filed by his lawyer yesterday afternoon was granted, which contained orders for Tato to immediately resume office as provincial administrator. The court heard that Solomon Tato was appointed PA by the National Executive Council in November 2014. His appointment has since been challenged by Governor Julie Soso and the Provincial Executive Council, which resulted in the appointment of Samson Akunai as acting provincial administrator. In August this year, following criminal allegations against Tato, Tato was ordered by the courts to vacate office to await committal court hearing. And those criminal allegations have been cleared on the 27th uh, of November 2015 by the uh, Goroka Committal Court. Tato's lawyer, George Lau, said this application is part of a case that Solomon Tato has against the EHP Governor Julie Soso, the Provincial Executive Council, Public Service Minister, the Secretary of Personal Management, and the current acting PA, Samson Akunai. And we got a restraining order now uh, for Mr. Tato to resume office forthwith and to restrain any defendants, any other people from uh, disturbing him from performing his function as the duly appointed uh, provincial administrator for East Nile's province. 
Part of the orders restrains the defendants from extending Samson Akunai's acting appointment, which is supposed to expire on the 11th of February. It is understood there is another fresh case in Goroka on this matter. However, Mr. Lau said their main case will be heard here in Waigani next year. This is the only authority that makes a uh, decision to revoke or appoint uh, uh, provincial administrators. And, and no PEC or no provincial governor has that power. And those are matters of law which we want to set the record straight. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. The Leadership Summit to be held on the 16th and 17th of February next year will see a detailed development report from all members of Parliament. Deputy Secretary for Policy with the Prime Minister's Department, Trevor Meari, said this in an interview with MTV News. Meari said every member of Parliament will be given the opportunity to present their reports on the impact of their DSIP funds so the country can be informed on its development progress in the last three years. In this interview with the Deputy Secretary, he announced the plans for the 2016 Leadership Summit. Um, the first day will basically involve all the national agencies talk about the, the priorities of government, health, education, law and order, infrastructure, and how the Treasury Department is looking at managing the economy in this difficult time. That's the first day. The second day we will involve all the districts and provinces across the countries. He says for 2015, only a few districts have been showing the progress of development using their DSIPs, while others have been silently delivering services or have done nothing. And the Leadership Summit will aim to reveal and see the progress of development throughout the country. A lot of Papua New Guineans don't know that DSIP has done a, a significant amount of development in a lot of districts, but we are not seeing the results of it. It's not coming out to the public very clearly so people understand that development is taking place in those districts. So the purpose of that, that leader summit in there, part of it is to look at all the developments that are taking place in districts. Local members are building classrooms, hospitals, uh, building roads in the, in the districts. And that's something that we want to bring it out very clear and the rest of Papua New Guinea understand that we've come a long way. After 40 years of independence, we've, we've come a long way. Different governments have come and gone. We've made progress over the years. But in the last three years, we've basically speed up that progress. Despite some districts not receiving in full their DSIPs, Mayor Uri says the national government is committed to deliver services. He says the drop in revenue will not change the budget for key development areas in health, education and road plus infrastructure developments. Although the revenue inflow is very low, the commitment in those areas still remains, which means the funding levels to those priority areas in health, education, law and order, infrastructure still remains. Government still maintaining their, their commitment in, in funding all those uh, priority areas. The Leadership Summit will run from the 17th to the 18th of February next year. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. And now a look at the finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.3325 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0 0.3250 US dollars, 0 0.4430 Australian dollars, 0.2942 Euro and 38.87 Japanese Yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold, coffee, cocoa closed higher, while copper closed the day lower. Crude oil closed the day lower, while palm oil and copper closed the day higher. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed at 117 points lower, the ASX closed 24 points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed 22 points lower. Still to come on National MTV News, politics in Hela, Bomana inmates welcome visitors and the first grade 12 graduates from rural Menyamia. Welcome back to the news. New Hela Governor Francis Potape says the removal of Anderson Agiru was not a case of political mutiny. Governor Potape said Mr. Agiru must consider the 13 points and explain to the people of Hela. Potape made this statement following a report published by Mr. Agiru today in one of the dailies. Newly sworn in Hela Governor Francis Potape this afternoon called on dismissed chairman of the Hela Provincial Assembly, Anderson Agiru, to stop the political nonsense. Accept, respect the wish of the leaders and the people. If you are not happy, go to court. It's no, no point trying to create 
confusion in the province again. Governor Potape rebutted on Mr. Iguru's comments in today's dailies with unlawful moves in replacing presidents and members of the assembly. Potape, who was unanimously voted by more than two-thirds of the assembly members yesterday, said Mr. Igiru must come out and explain the 13 grounds leveled against him. He never told the people why he didn't conduct four assembly meetings in a year. He never told the people why he's not operating out of Tari or is not seen around. Understanding orders, Mr. Potape brushed aside comments made by Mr. Igiru and reaffirmed that he is rightfully the Hela governor after following legal processes. It's not a political meeting. The process that we followed is all outlined in the, in the organic law and provincial government analogies, especially section 20, and also the standing orders. Members of the Hela Provincial Assembly say it is time there is order in the assembly and seek collective decisions for Hela people. Because we are not killing problems. We are not killing leadership like you mean. We must be in law and running problems. When the money comes, you must cut in the assembly and PC and then process must be taken by you cutting money and by you selling money go work it up. Governor Potape called on the Hela people to remain calm for he is ready to take the province forward. And with this new look PC and all that, we will ensure that all funds that are coming to the province are distributed or shared of, or, or, or seen by all the leaders, they will see, fiscally see what happens to the money. Jack Lapave, Jr., National MTV News. The festive season is a time for giving. This was clearly felt at the Bomana prison after a recent visit by, by Carl Okuk and the youth reform. Bomana jail commander Kidi Keko, who was thankful for the gesture, says the inmates usually go unnoticed at this time of the year. The inmates of Bomana Correctional Service were not forgotten this festive season. They were visited by the Youth Reform and Carl Okuk, who donated six cows and 6,000 kina to go towards the New Year festivities. While in Bomana, Carl Okuk learned about Bomana Correctional Service's Easter Cup and pledged to sponsor next year's event. Thank you. So Easter Cup, I'm talking about now, but I'm sponsoring the Easter Cup. Lo Easter Cup, I'm looking for ten thousand kina. Lo sponsorship lo is organisation. I'll do Easter Cup, but you plan to look some organisation committee. Lo Easter, na you plan to talk talk, na I'm looking for some. We'll find out uh, details of it. Eh? But Bomana Jail Commander Kiri Keko says it was an unexpected gesture and acknowledged Carl Okuk and the youth reform for the initiative. Commander Keko says the initiative coincides with the rehabilitation program. People are fortunate long having people like yourself and others that have come help people along. Make him sit down and play all right. Uh, what you have come in a small way or big way, I mean, we are thankful and we help him all too. Uh, it also complements our rehabilitation project programs. According to one of the inmates, while being in prison, they miss out on family moments and special occasions, most especially the festive season. This gesture has made them feel a little closer to home and fills a void of not being around family during this festive season. Marilyn Diaukatam, National MTV News. 85 students have become the first grade 12 graduates from Menyame Secondary School in Morabe Province since it achieved its secondary school status. Landowner and board member Sinopa Sauroko said this is a big achievement for the school. 18 of its grade 10 students were also accepted at Wawin National High School to do their grade 11. Despite the seven-month dry spell in the district, the school successfully completed the 2015 academic year with support from the local community. People from Menyamia Station helped to fetch water in large containers from a spring up in the mountains. A local businessman also supplied food to the school when there was a shortage. Landowner and a board member of the school, Sinopa Sauroko, says the impact of the dry spell was minimized. School is not yet. Time not dry season. So school running go 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 coming up long finish long em now. Last year, education authorities granted permission to Menyamia I to change its status to a secondary school, and this year the school saw its first grade 12s graduate. 
the school as students from the other districts and provinces. School caretaker Juane Simus Andes says most students come to Menyama Secondary School to avoid school fights, a common problem in city schools. Minyama Secondary School, despite its achievements as its problems, the education subsidy takes some time to reach the school, which has forced the school to borrow in order to keep the school running. Mata Lewis, National MTV News, Lay. The Farmers and Settlers Association has expressed concern over the government's lack of commitment to appoint various agriculture and livestock commodity boards. Association President Wilson Thompson told MTV News the delay is due to the functional expenditure review and legislative amendment in the agriculture sector. It's anticipated this sector will change and expand next year with some slight increase in their operational budgets. The Farmers and Settlers Association in a statement released today won the Agriculture and Livestock Department with its commodity boards management to appoint various boards because the enabling legislation is still in force. Mr. Thompson said concerns were on legislation's delay yet to be tabled in Parliament. This includes matters concerning commodity boards that have literally been left without operating boards. A petition was presented to the state in 2014 and was later taken to court. Mr. Thompson called on the personal management with agriculture departments to immediately undertake process of appointing stakeholders. The focus now should be on rehabilitation programs with more innovative research for relevant outcome frameworks. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Truka Sports is up next. We'll have some news on cricket, rugby league and soccer. Stay with us. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports. The 2016 Australian Country Cricket Championships is set for next month, and nine Papua New Guinean players have been named in the International Cricket Council East Asia Pacific team. Vagi Guba, Jason Killer, and Hiri Hiri are among the nine players that have been selected. The EAP team also consists of four other players from Vanuatu as well as one from Japan. The team will play against teams from states throughout Australia. Since the announcement of a new club working committee, the Connie Tigers Rugby League Club has said they will work to take back ownership of the Connie Tigers Oval. Apparently, the Connie Tigers land was illegally sold seven years ago and the working committee has made it clear their priority in 2016 is to regain the land title. The Kone Tigers Club is one of the oldest in the country and since announcing the new working committee for the upcoming season, they have been asking questions regarding the state of the land where the Kone Tigers Oval is located. As we have received a bad uh, image of the club for, for the last eight years after the sale of the uh, Kone Tigers Oval. With, uh, so bad management in the past with the, with the uh, disposal of the land. The club also reaches out to the nearby community and neighboring suburbs and to have the land taken away will be a loss for the people. The club itself to serve the community yeah, that we uh, a part of rugby league is a part of the great uh, country of ours. We need to develop uh, the the game, and the game, and uh, Kony Tigers uh, Rugby League Club is better place to do that. It represents the uh, the surrounding communities, particularly the surrounding communities of Geru, uh, Morata. It's a uh, rugby league uh, game that's already uh, going on. The new working committee wants to rebuild the foundations of the club and address all pressing issues and bring the club back to its glory days. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. Fiji may co-host the 2017 Rugby League World Cup with Australia, New Zealand and Papua New Guinea. Fiji National Rugby League CEO Timothy Naleba confirmed that the country will host two matches of the Rugby League World Cup. He also said they have received a letter from the Rugby League World Cup committee expressing their interest for Fiji to be a co-host for the tournament. 
Fiji Bati reached two World Cup semifinals in the past with the best performance coming at the 20, 2008 tournament, which was held in Australia, when the side caught the attention of many with an impressive performance against France and Ireland in the pool matches. To soccer now and 2015 and beyond, we'll see major improvements for football in Papua New Guinea. On the local front, more clubs have joined the National Soccer League competition. Many had expected early on for it to be another year for Hekari United and few could guess that it would be a fight down to the wire. Hekari as expected rose to the top of the table early on in the season. Wins over Oro, Medang, Besta and FC Port Moresby showed that the nine-time champions were about to set the pace for season 10. At Marlti were one of two debutants for season 10, newly appointed coach Peter Sakaias, who had only a few months before guided a Manus provincial side to the gold medal playoff in the PNG Games, would find himself at the helm of a young squad, willing to prove Best FC were one of the shock outfits for the early part of the year. With Bob Morris at the helm and the fact a large part of the club were also training on the national coach Ricky Herbert, the team showed glimpses of promise. FC Port Moresby would return after a year's hiatus, and a top four finish was something they had been planning from preseason. They would finish the season losing to Leigh City in the semi finals, succumbing by a devastating 3 1 loss. Which brings us to Leigh City Dwellers. Grand final day in late May, and the Sir Ignatius Kelaga Stadium was filled to the rafters, the adjoining streets packed. When Lee Wabing opened the scoring, the roar from the home side was deafening. Medang, however, weren't out of the match yet. And soon after, it was Sammy Hiob with the equalizer. Considering the fact that the dwellers were playing at home in front of their home crowd, it was no surprise when Nigel Dabinyaba doubled Lay's lead. From the near post, Obed Bicker would sneak in the third goal of the match. By then, Madang were crushed. Although no player probably deserved it more than captain Raymond Gunemba. Gunemba onto it. Might chip it over. Jeremy Moggy, National MTV Sports. And Truka Sports continues after the break with some international soccer. Truka Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Samoa has secured the last spot for the Oceania qualifying match for the FIFA World Cup in Russia in 2018 after they topped Stage 1. They came out on top in the first stage of the Russia 2018 qualifiers against the Polynesian nations. Samoa will now line up alongside Papua New Guinea, American Samoa and Tahiti in Stage 2, while New Zealand, Solomon Islands, Fiji and Vanuatu will be in another group. The next stage of qualifications will be held here in Port Moresby from the 28th of May to the 11th of June. The top six will advance to the third stage to be played during 2017, with the overall winner to feature in an intercontinental playoff against a South American opponent in November 2017. Oceania qualification for the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia is a small part of the qualification process for the region's 11 member associations. And now both New Zealand and Tahiti are turning their attention to mid-year matches as they vie to qualify for the World Cup. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. And in the English Premier League, Leicester City again showed they could mix it with the big guns, going level on points with Premier League leaders Arsenal and Manchester City. The clash between the division's top two scoring sides provided plenty of entertaining moments. Manchester City leapfrogged Tottenham Hotspur to go into third place and trail the top two by only three points. It was a good performance for us. I wanted to see their reaction, our reaction after the Liverpool defeat. Uh, the reaction was good. Uh, we played calm, we tried to do our job and uh, go and try to, to win the match. 
of course, uh, we created chances, but also City created chances. We came here to try to win the game. And from the first minute of the game, we, came, we, win, we went for, for the three points. I, I think that we have more possession than Leicester, that we have more attempts than Leicester, that we did more things to win the game. But of course, of course, if you cannot win, it's very important not to lose. We love to stay there. I know it's not our position, but we fight. And that ends Shukai Sports for this year. The weather details next and spreading the goodwill cheer to welcome 2016. Shukai Sports. True Kai Sports. And here's a look at your weather for the next 24 hours. We begin in the southern region, Port Moresby. Some showers with a top temperature of 31 degrees, a low of 23. Daru, mostly fine, a top temperature of 31, a minimum of 23. Kerama, some showers, a top temperature of 32 degrees. A top of 31 for Alata with some showers expected over the next 24 hours and some showers as well in Popendeta, a top temperature of 31 degrees. To the Momasi region, Lei, some showers with a top of 31, a top of 31 as well in Wa with some showers and rain over the next 24 hours. Showers in Madang with a top temperature of 30, a top of 32 in Wiwek and a top of 32 as well in Vanimo with some showers. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorangao, some showers, Kaven, some showers as well, Kokopo and Rabaul, as well as Kimbe, some showers, and Buka in the autonomous region of Bougainville, some showers with a top temperature of 30 degrees. And in the highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, some showers over the next 24 hours. To a look at the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours, but first there is a strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerma, Yule Island to Hood Point to all Milne Bay Islands and New Guinea Islands. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerma, Yule Island to Hood Point to Samurai Island with waters of Eastern and Western Milne Bay Islands with waters of Manus and its western group of islands sees 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters east of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchafen sees 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Finchafen including Vitya Strait, CSC Islands to Long Island and waters of New Island to New Britain and Bougainville sees 2.5 to 3 meters. And waters west of Long Island to Medang, Bogia, Wiwak to Aitape, Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border Seas 1 to 1.5 meters. And a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas. In Coral Sea, there is a warning. Seas moderate with northwesterly winds at 15 to 20 knots. Solomon Sea, seas rather rough with northwest to southwesterly winds at 20 to 25 knots. Bismarck Sea, sea is moderate to rather rough with northwesterly winds at 15 to 25 knots and the Pacific Ocean, sea is rough with northwest to westerly winds at 25 to 34 knots. And finally tonight, Kiara Wariniki, the daughter of prominent lawyer Philip Wariniki, will donate some of her birthday gifts to the children's ward at the Port Mosby General Hospital tomorrow. These gifts are part of her birthday giveaway celebrations to commemorate her first birthday. The family decided to share the gifts with children in hospital as a goodwill gesture this festive season. These gifts, nicely wrapped and labelled, will be the New Year spoils for the kids at the Port Mosby General Hospital's Children's Ward. And that's the way it is. Thursday, the 31st of December 2015, as we count down to 2016. Stay tuned for MTV's New Year in, Re Year in Review. That's coming up at 8.30 tonight. But from the entire MTV News team, Happy New Year. See you next year.